dibs on it, so uh, it's my own fault because I right. love this story. I also, you didn't you. ever do it. I, that's exactly it. I never it. called dibs, and I never did it, so it's my own fault. It is. So I'm, but I'm excited that we're getting to do this because this is a fun one. Well, Bob, obviously you've been fun. thinking about it, too, so you come up with some good theories, Oh, yeah. I've been hope, thinking so. about this for years. Okay, And well, the good, good news for our listeners is that I get to pre- pretend like I've never heard of it before uh, and ask all the questions you're asking them, so it's perfect. perfect. There we go. Exactly. So thank you both for, uh, for your enthusiasm. You're so I'm welcome. glad you like this one. Uh, and also, I want to thank Caitlin and JW, our listeners who suggested this one, and uh, anybody else who did and somehow got left off our list of people to thank. Sorry about that. But uh, first of all, I want to say this story is not about Dave Box. It's about Dave Box. It's not about <laughs> Dave Box, B O X. It's the Dave Box is spelled B O C K S. It's a good distinction to it make. Is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I hadn't thought. I kept. I always had it. Is I put an R in. I always had for some reason. Brox. I kept saying Brox. I did Brox? too. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Box. Just Box, but not B O X. Because obviously, if somebody was named Dave Box, he would have changed his name to Cardboard. <laughs> you know? So there, is, there cannot, Probably, by definition, yeah. be a Dave Box, right? Yeah. Okay, so our Dave, Dave Box, was a 39-year-old who uh, worked as a pipe fitter. He was hired at the Fernal Seed plant in 1981, and he was considered to be a pretty solid employee and a regular fellow. Dave had been married. He had three kids. He had gotten, unfortunately, divorced several years prior to the time that he, quote-unquote, went away. Mm. And uh, some people, of course, believe he died on the job. In fact, a lot, of, pretty much everybody does. Uh, that he died there at the majority of people think yeah. so. Yeah, but yeah. some very important people do not. So. Uh, yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. And of course, uh, there's a, a certain conspiracy theory. Should I talk about that? No. No. Why okay. wouldn't you save that for the theories? Okay, I'll save that then. Okay. Let's, okay. It's like we haven't been doing this for years. I or know, something. right? <laughs> All right, fine. Okay, we'll hold so, off. So, but on can that. you talk more about the the feed? Production yeah, the Fernald Feed Production Center, uh, as the name implies, it produced la- feed for large animals like cattle and pigs. Uh, <laughs> except, in this case, the cattle and pigs were actually nuclear reactors. And, and so yeah. the name was actually technically true, but a little bit deceptive. Yeah, so well, it was it's because they were feeding the materials into the reactors. Yeah. I, I believe that's why they called it a the, the name had feed in it. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it was in, ag- in an agricultural area, and uh, and so a lot of people kind of assumed, and it was actually built and owned by the government, the U.S. government. And but they just didn't bother to tell people that actually it was it was shaping uranium into like, you know, like uranium rods for reactors and that kind of thing. Rods, you know, fuel rods, billets. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was three or four so specific slugs and there, stuff like that. Yeah, slugs know, was yeah. the one I couldn't think of. Yeah, all these things that they were using to actually fuel the reactors. Uh-huh. Right, so yeah. they were. It was technically feed. It was feed for something. Yeah, for something. something was, yeah, nuclear reactors something need food too, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- I think the truth finally started to come out in 1983 when the locals finally found out that this innocent-looking plant was actually producing uranium. Which is, of course, perfectly innocent, too. Well, don't get me uh, wrong. Well, hold on, Joe, though. So they everybody knew that they were producing uranium. The idea was that they were doing it for reactors, for energy. What uh-huh. the big secret was is that they were also making weapons-grade nuclear material, which... You know, I'm not sure that they were doing that. I think that um, I... They took special orders. I think it's what... Okay, so there were... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there were technically 12 plants, so they only named one through nine as plants. Uh But there was at least two of them that were doing custom work Uh in terms of shaping and and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I understood, it it might actually be some of those those custom shops or custom buildings Mm -hmm. that were doing some of the shaping for the weapons material. Uh, Mm -hmm. Possible. It might be true. I I had thought that they were just taking basically high-grade uranium shaping it into rods to, to put into reactors so the reactors could convert it to weapons grade fuel but eh, maybe they were doing all of those things i don't know yeah i mean it it's, sounds it's like there was a big complex and they were doing all sorts of interesting very stuff. hidden yeah. yeah yeah clandestine stuff kind of clandestine a little bit yeah obviously the employees were expected to not talk a lot about what they did mm-hmm. uh but the plant was there since 1951 i i, I it, it at least was Construction began in 51. I don't know. If, I think it started operating in 53. But 53 sounds right, yeah. Operated till 1989. It's gone. That's uh, suspiciously convenient. I know. For the, yeah, it is. I know. Uh, but they uh, have taken it away and made it you know, a wildlife reserve or something, and there's like animals or birds or something. Or right a now. super fun site. Or, yeah, well, it was a super fun site, yeah. But it's, where, it's where they raise all of our 
X-Men all of our now. Yeah, <laughs> all of our all of our three eyed gazelles yeah. and, and our our five footed toes. Blinky yeah. from the Simpsons is probably from there. Yeah, yeah. probably. Uh, it's near. It's called named after the tiny town of Fernal, which it, I can't really seem to find on the Google aerials. But that's about 15 miles northwest of Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, mm-hmm. the nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, it was also known to the locals as NLO, which stands for National Lead of Ohio, which ran the plant for the owners. Of course, as I said, the U.S. government. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was they sort of ran it on a day-to-day basis, but still the government made this, the ultimate decisions as to what happened at the plant. There's mm-hmm. owners, yeah. and then there's the contractor who runs it. Yeah, it's exactly. It's pretty, pretty yeah. standard. Yeah. Especially for the U.S. government. Yeah. 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 And so uh, the plant was under the control of the Atomic Energy Commission until 1979 when the Department of Energy took it over. There were some environmental and safety issues with it, and those had actually been ongoing for a long time. Uh, I mean, since, like, the 50s, uh, National Ed was reporting problems to the AEC about, you know, the Atomic Energy leaking. Commission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, you know, dust, like they had these weird bag cloth dust filters because there was a lot of uranium dust from processing all this uranium so that that would get filtrated and, and deposited in these bags, kind of like vacuum cleaner bags almost. And, well, those things had a tendency to break and spew dust everywhere mm-hmm. and things like this. There were all kinds of issues like this that were ongoing. Uh, you know, uh, can I can I take yeah. this aside for a second? I was thinking about this today, and if you, Devin, you may not remember this, but kind of in the seventies and the eighties, yeah, there was no. this this mode of, well, this is the way it is, and we'll just do this stuff, and it's okay. You know, technology isn't really advancing because, by and large, the general public didn't see technology making huge leaps and bounds like we do today. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine what the world would be like if we had all got stuck in, say, 1982 and for some reason our technology just didn't advance? What a freaking mess things would be in terms of all of the stuff that, we, oh, it's okay. You can pour it into the river. You can bury it into the ground. Yeah. Spew it into the, it good. doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, I, well, we weren't quite there. And by, by 1982, we were cleaning things up, actually. Well, but, but still, not everywhere. But my point is, like, what what it would have been if we had just stopped doing and just kept on status quo through like the a, 90s? Sounds like something to write to the Star Trek people about. <sighs> yeah, have them do an episode on that. Yeah, I think they might have. Yeah. It's the Planet yeah. of the Tribbles. Yeah, Captain's Log, start date in 1972. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but enough about those environmental issues, which they had. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little okay. while. Um, but they did have those. But we don't know whether or not they had much to do with Dave Box or not. That really wasn't his job. He was, like I said, a pipe fitter. And his job was to, like, you know, inspect and repair the various equipment, you know, equipment, pipes, whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. the pipes that were. Feeding the vacuum tubes. Yeah, yeah. He was part of the maintenance crew. Yeah, Yeah. he worked the midnight shift. He was or the the swing. Yeah, he was was graveyard. 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 Thank you. So midnight to like seven a.m. or seven. Right. So his job was straight up maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. The plant was shut down, and he uh, he and his his crew would go out and just maintain things. Dave was last seen uh, at the Fernald plant about five a.m. on the morning of June nineteenth, nineteen eighty four. He was pronounced legally dead about two years later. Uh, and so let's start on the night of Dave's disappearance. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, had, uh, carpooled to work with a guy named Harry Easterling. Which Her- he's usually carpooled with, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a regular guy. And, and actually, Harry, if you want to see what Harry looked like, he has a, has a beard, genial-looking fellow. He was he appeared on um, Unsolved Mysteries on an episode about this. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the, he and Harry usually met at this restaurant uh, parking lot, and one of them would leave their car, and they'd go in one car, uh, on that night, Harry picked up Dave about 11 p.m. Harry reported no unusual behavior from Dave that night, uh, except that he had bought a new lunchbox. So Very woo-hoo. suspicious. Yeah, that's suspicious. That's itself. exciting. Yeah, and that's about He said something about maybe he was talking about maybe taking his kids on vacation the next summer or something or later in the summer. Harry Easterling said that he and Dave always began their work day in the maintenance room, which apparently was in this thing they called the maintenance building. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Crazy. Yeah, it was a special maintenance building. 
Uh, he said that Dave, as usual that day, unlocked his toolbox and left the lock with the keys in it on top of the box. Dave's assignment that day was to go repair some equipment in Plan 8 uh, in what was called the whistleblower meat hook room. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's true. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's not his name. I don't think I'm it. Sure. I don't think so. No, uh, he was assigned to Plan 8. I, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I heard not specifically what he was supposed to do over there, but he was supposed to go do something. Uh, and and I by the way I tried to find a map of this whole complex because it's a huge place. Yeah. And I and I guess the government didn't publish maps of it. You know, surprisingly Shock. enough. Shock. I know. Aww. I was not able to find one on the webs anyway. Yeah, it was a government facility. So, Weird. Well, yeah. I mean, like you probably can't find maps of like Bonneville Dam, for instance, can you? Probably not. I mean, you wouldn't. That's not the sort of thing you would want the general public to be able to snag mm -hmm. just yeah. in case. Yeah. You I know? just say, attention terrorists, sensitive yeah. pressure point yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is where you put the bomb. Uh -huh. yeah. Well done. Uh, yeah, so no map. So I, where all these buildings are in relation to one another, I don't know. And, of course, the place is torn down. You can't even look at it on, look at it on Google. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gone. So we're just going to have to wing it on that one. But Dave left his toolbox in the maintenance room instead of taking it with him. I'm not sure why he did that, but apparently... He did that he on did. a regular basis. Apparently, yeah. So I, I, he must have just decided what tools he was going to need and yeah. taken them and Seems off Seems like, went. I mean, he'd worked there for a while, hadn't he? Yeah, he'd worked there for since 81, so yeah. about three years. So you probably by that point know, you know, if somebody says, okay, you got to go fix this certain type of pipe, he says, all right, I need these five different tools and, mm, you know... Off I go, yeah. Why also carry, probably yeah. hourly, yeah. so like, oh no, if he has to walk back or if something. If you've ever, I mean, yeah, it's a government job, so yeah. Who cares if you have to walk back and forth five times? You're yeah. still getting paid the same uh -huh. rather than lugging that heavy box. But, Joe, I thought he had worked there longer than that. I thought he had started there, like, more than a decade prior to I, his disappearance. Uh, I don't know. I could be wrong. I heard that he started in 1981, but, hey. Okay, I really, uh, I thought that he had been working there since the early to mid seventies. Maybe he started in his position as a pipe fitter in eighty one, mm. but he was doing something else. Maybe that's it. He started out like as a typist or something like that. Well, then, you know, yeah. like a yeah. general maintenance handyman or something. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I, maybe, I, I don't know. It's yeah. okay. I that's I swore uh, he'd yeah. been there for much longer. Like I felt like he had had a lot of career time there. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what does what does matter is that uh, this particular night was his, the last night of his career there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then uh, okay, what was I was? Oh yeah, I was talking about his toolbox. Uh, it was the toolbox was there a few days later after Dave disappeared. Uh, he left his toolbox, went up to Plan Eight to fix the radioactive snitch rectifier, <laughs> which uh, was reportedly making an odd sound. Did it? And his his toolbox was missing some tools, though, right? As uh, you would expect. Nobody has said that, that oh. I can find whether what tools were gone, what tools were not gone. Okay. But the okay. toolbox was there, and with a lock on top of it. Apparently, Dave trusted his coworkers. Yeah. I guess they must have all had a good relationship. Or it was company tools. Yeah, and maybe he didn't care. Good point. Which is the weird. I, that is weird, though. Why would you leave your keys instead of carrying them around? Well, that's the thing is, you know, he gets the, he gets the toolbox out, and it's got a padlock on it. So, obviously, he doesn't trust people to not steal from it, and then he opens well, it Well, he up. doesn't trust the day people. So Maybe that's, that's thank what you. it is. I just had that thought. I was it like, oh, no, he trusts the maintenance people, nobody yeah. else. That, yeah. that must be what it is, yeah. yeah. but uh, so They're he, probably throwing his tools in the in the, the oil vats or, or the, the acid vats or something. I think it was <laughs> funny. Yeah, that could Look have been. Look at it, sizzle! Yeah. You know, people are, like, planting drugs in there, planting crack. <laughs> uh, so that night, uh, according to... Unsolved Mysteries, an unnamed co-worker of Dave's. So, and we never do get a chance to find out who this person was. Unnamed. He was unnamed. Uh, he said that he saw Dave in a pickup truck with his supervisor having a heated discussion about something, but the windows of the truck were rolled up so the co-worker could not hear what was being discussed. By the way, this struck the co-worker as odd, the windows being up, because it was a warm night. So I, I have a uh, uh, one. I'm a, always disturbed when we have a single source for something like that, especially uh -huh. when it comes from unsolved mysteries. But I had heard it as not a heated but a serious conversation. That's another way, but I've I've heard it actually characterized as an argument. Well, yeah. I was going to say, there's there's a couple of different... Well, if you look at it, I was thinking about it. If it's a serious conversation, it could be a very serious, quiet tone, or it could be serious as in one person, like, try, it's serious, they're not trying not to cry or something. But the whole, the whole, the windows were up, what I want to know, was the vehicle turned on? 
Yeah, because it might have had the AC going. going. Yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering too. So the windows being rolled up might have been totally normal. But then mean, again, yeah. it's a government vehicle, so it probably didn't have AC because they oh, always would, bought the cheapest jalopies possible. Yeah, actually, it w- it was eighty four. I bet government vehicles all have AC now. Oh, but, uh, it's yeah. standard. Yeah. yeah. But maybe not back in those days. No, I remember my dad being in government vehicles, you know, regular civilian cars and trucks. And they were always the lowest model. It's kind of like you've been in a forest service truck before, haven't you, Joe? Yeah, I think so. They they have nothing in them. Whatever comes bare bones standard is what they get. Mm. So, yeah. 